Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I'll be showing you how I keep my batteries charged during cloudy days when the solar panels won't generate enough incoming power. Also, in order to reduce the controllers from turning off and on because the battery system is too low. How do I keep our system working 24 hours a day, seven days a week with low solar panel input? I found a way to offset this issue that would assist you too. It doesn't matter the brand you have. My goal is to reduce the cost to using grid power, which depending on where you are located can be very expensive. At the same time, for every dollar you save from paying a utility company, helps you recoup your costs of the system you bought. Picture your system as the utility company you own and how would you support it. My system has 30,000 watts of battery power to use. But remember that the batteries will go into a default for protection before reaching the full amount. So let's figure only having say 20,000 watts to use under normal conditions. The extra 10,000 watts think of for emergency and battery protection. This is how I plan to use my system so this is just an idea for you to adjust to meet your needs. Let's get started. In case I got a couple EG4 6500EX uh, 48 volt um, from Signature Solar. Um, got all wired in here um, all the way through the back. I'll, I'll show some pictures of how I have it without the, my cart in the way. Um, let's see I got the uh, the EG4 6 batteries uh, that are set up right here. Have the wires coming off here and going all the way over just the normal setup. That uh, works good. So I end up throwing in a, a, a cart I had. That way I can keep all my supplies readily available, whether that's wire cutters, meters, those kind of things uh, ready to go. So if there's a problem, I don't have to go searching for things. I have everything right on hand um, and ready to rock and roll, whatever we need to do to keep things rolling. So, okay. So I'll come back to that in just a minute. So, and then I have everything kind of running over, going into a panel, 220 volt. Um, then I have a couple outlets in case I need to use power right here. I have a 120 volt outlet there and a 240 outlet there. Um, that works good if I have to hook something up. Uh, down here I have the solar on off switch connector. Uh, so I have two sets in this case coming in. Um, and then on the panel, so I actually have it for the EG4, uh, line one and line two. That's over here on this side. And then I have my uh, transfer switch um, that's going to be going to the house. So I can, I can control everything right here. And then I have 120 volt and the 240 volt that goes to the ones right underneath. So I can, if I need to do any testing or checking. So, okay. So, all right. And then up above, I actually wired in a, whoops, I actually wired in a outlet there. So I can actually run it over to my transfer switch cord. I kind of just have that along the wall above the door and it kind of comes down around over to the Reliance. This actually was a really easy system to hook up. Um, they did a really good job in keeping it simple. Uh, you can see it's everything's running, it's plugged in. And this, if, uh, if you didn't have, uh, this is the same cord that you actually would use. If you're running to your generator. So, but I have it set up differently. So, um, this would be the same system if, if you're using Reliance and you would take that cord, uh, plug it into your generator on the other end. But in this case, I'm using my, my power system in place of the generator. So that's why that outlet is there. So pretend that outlet was on the generator that you're going to be running and same kind of thing. Everything is set up temporarily if I needed to, but I'll go over that in another video. So with this one, we're going to be talking about uh, power generation. So, um, so then I just ran some conduit underneath my workbench here and it kind of comes up. Sorry for the rat's nest. We're always working on something here. And that's my uh, transfer switch and that goes into my panel. That way I can run. So the difference is on this one, I actually put an outlet that goes directly to my uh, breaker panel outside that goes to the grid. That's the only thing uh, separate. Otherwise my cord goes to my power strip here and everything's running off the battery because I'm trying to keep everything running on the battery. And that's my backup for the winter time or if I need to generate something. I need some uh, 
uh, grid power. So, and that, but that's where I'm going to uh, show you what I do with it in the winter time. So, as you can see, everything is on. All my circuits are running. Everything is good. So, all right. So that's kind of how I ran it there. Um, let's see. So I'm going to show you how I have the everything else set up. So in this case, so I'm going to have my this charger, which is this is what it looks like. So, and then what I have is my batteries here. And in this case, I actually had to put some tape here. But actually, uh, because I can't use the the lock. So, depend on your situation. If you can do this safely, if you know, keep it. Uh, like that and everybody's safe then then that's a good thing so um but in this case i actually have it just hooked up to the the positive to the positive side negative to the negative side before you actually hook this charger up to your batteries make sure you shut everything down so say positive there negative there then i was able to go ahead and turn your system back on turn your breakers on remember this one is your top top one that runs everything so you know, we start with that one, then work to your next one. Start with those, go over, turn your uh, the solar panels on, your breakers on, those kind of things, you know, different order. Um, yeah, so you can actually do your breakers, batteries, solar, then push the buttons in for your inverters once those kick in. So kind of how I do it there. Okay, so once that's done, um, and in this case, say I haven't even... Uh, Plug this in, it's just hooked up here. Okay, so what you're gonna do, shut your door and get that out of the way. So you got your uh, cord here. Okay, that's your cord, it's gonna be going on there. All right, All right we're gonna go put that cord and that, plug those in, give me a second. Plug that in. In this case, I'm going to actually just kind of stick it in there. And you got your other end, right? You got your other end here. Right? So, we're going to just bring that over here. Okay, then you got your cord in. And we'll stick it in our outlet. Remember, this one's hooked up to the grid in my case. But if you had the generator, you just uh, put it in the generator. Okay, and then I just have my cord running. Put your cord up against the wall, anything like that. I like to slide my cord underneath, and you can always tape this off. So, you know, clean it up to so if nobody trips on it. So I'll just slide that underneath. So, then you got your battery kicking on, or your charger kicking on, excuse me. So, and that's going to do it that. It'll start charging here. See the so now sometimes you're not going to see it blinking, okay? And it'll just be charging like I think it's charging. Um, but in this case, we just we want this unit on. It's running, as you can see. Red is charging. So what I found is if I I can run things off, like unplug that during the day, run things, or even on if you have a time when when your power bill is going to be higher, you could actually go and unplug at the wall run this thing through the day or through the night that way you're at least maintaining i think this gets about a thousand watts an hour roughly somewhere in there um so at least you're bringing something in um but it, but you want to make sure this top battery is the one that's actually staying higher if i've noticed if i get below the two dots or excuse me if i get uh, two dots then i'm kind of like eh, maybe it's going to shut down so you want to plug this thing in and run it but if it's at three dots or four dots no problem so uh, I, I, you can have the other ones at one, at one or two dots. That's not, a, that's not a problem before you put your charger on. But your main one is you want that first battery, your control battery. That is the cable coming off that's communicating with it. You want that, the master battery, I think is what we, how it's called. So you want that one to be at least um, two if three. Three or four is always a good thing. So, um, so if you're getting down to two lights on the first battery... Plug, plug the charger in, get that thing uh, running, and you'll have less issues with your system shutting down. And that way we can keep things rolling. So, hope this kind of, this video helps.
Um, let me know in the comments if uh, if there's anything new you want to see. I know I was a little wordy, but I want to try and get that information out to you because it's hard to find stuff um, that just it keeps it simple. So, so that's how I'm doing it. Um, probably if I got the uh, bigger unit in the future charger, then I could probably uh, char charge it up faster. But at the same time, when it's charging up fa faster and you're on the grid, well, your bill's going to go up because you're using more more watts. Um, so in this case, but it'll work for any battery. Just make sure you're, you know, it's parallel in to it. So it's not, you're not going to get the reading on here. The reading on, on the inverters that tell you how much power you came in will not reflect what the charger actually put in. So that's going to be extra besides the uh, inverter. So it's going to throw you off on your numbers if you're running those numbers like that. Um, but just remember this one gets around, I think it's around a thousand watts. I think when I, when I uh, add it up using Ohm's law. Um, so there you go. Hope that helps. Um, let me know what you think and and where uh, questions you have and I'll start throwing some other videos out on other little key things that might help you out. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. All right, so today it's raining outside. Yesterday it was my batteries were fully charged. Today you can see there's two dots on the number one battery. So so this is what I do do if I need to put the charger on. We'll run it. Uh, for a little while maybe all day long this is in the morning so we'll run it all day long plugged into the charger here keep it boosted up and then tomorrow I think it's supposed to be sunny so we'll see how uh, we top it off and and unplug it in the morning so this is kind of a routine that I do so I'm going off of the two dots so two dots equals I'm gonna plug that cord in see it has power on it I'm gonna plug it to the end of this and then we're gonna get the system working it's gonna be charging because today's probably not gonna charge anything it's a cloudy very rainy dark cloud it's a very rainy day and it's on dark clouds so we're not gonna really get any generation out of it but I'll show you at the end of the day what we generated today even though that's gonna be different in your area wherever you're at but just kind of gives you an idea of when I'm actually plugging this unit in so this whole week has been great, sunny, and this has not been rocking and rolling and doing good. Uh, generating a lot of power and keeping the batteries topped off. So you see just overnight it dropped down. So I'm going to plug it in and that's kind of how I know when I'm going to charge it. So I'm going to keep it charged all day long, plugged in all day long. Have this charger running. It's going to be put, so I know I'm going to probably, if I calculate in my head, I'm going to be running at least 20 hours. So that's 20,000 watts probably running off of here or at least until tomorrow and then uh, I'll unplug it tomorrow hopefully if it seems like it's topping off and I'm not using all the power for other things and we'll see where it goes all right